Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy Watchers. I'd like to talk about a news story uh, that was uh, aired through BBC.com and through uh, Nature.com, <clears throat> scientific journal. Headline, British researchers granted approval to edit genes in human embryos. Gene editing in human embryos. What do you do when you edit the genes of a human embryo? Well, you begin to change the embryo. You change it into something that it wasn't. And this is more important as a story, I think, than you can possibly imagine. I want to go back in the Bible to Genesis chapter 2, uh, when God created the heavens and the earth and the plants and the animals. <clears throat> and he also formed man out of the dust of the ground. And in Genesis 2.8, the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground uh, made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So very, very quickly in the creation narrative we have a couple of trees. Tree of life, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil uh, is interesting in so many ways, and I think most of all because we don't really know what it was, except that it had a particular effect. Uh, the Lord uh, instructed Adam very, very specifically uh, in verse 16 of Genesis 2, uh, the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree in the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, <clears throat> thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof uh, thou shalt surely die. I think everybody who has read the Bible understands this story. Tree of the knowledge of good and evil is poison fruit. Well, you know the story. You know how the serpent uh, tempted the woman. <clears throat> and that we find that in Genesis 3, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So he, the first thing he did was question God. The serpent, of course, being Satan, uh, throughout the Bible he's referred to in a reptilian manner. He is a, a serpent, a snake, a dragon. He is uh, <clears throat> everything reptilian. But he had a certain allure. And the woman said to the serpent, oh, we may eat freely of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Uh, this is fascinating. You shall be as gods. Did you ever stop and think about what that might mean? Uh, we have small g God <clears throat> here. You shall be as small g gods. Not like God himself, the creator, but you shall be as gods, plural. Uh, so he was promising them godhood. And in so doing, he was not lying. Uh, he was simply referring to the fact that there are gods. And we find, reading the Bible, that there are lesser uh, beings created by God throughout the heavens, the cherubim, <clears throat> the angels, the seraphim, uh, and on and on. And, uh, by the millions, I suppose, uncounted numbers of created beings in the heaven who are above man. And Satan was uh, saying to the woman, you know, <clears throat> if you eat this tree, uh, eat the fruit of it, you'll be like but one of those greater beings. You'll be, uh, you will up yourself a notch in the creation plan. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. And by the way, <clears throat> they both made a choice, and they both ate the forbidden fruit. I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know, but there's something here that I find very interesting. And the eyes of them both were 
open. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Well, they, rather than rising a notch, as they expected to do, they fell a notch. They lost their glory. They realized they were naked. They started to cover themselves up. And you know the rest of the story. <clears throat> God comes down from heaven. He castigates the first couple. He <clears throat> curses the serpent. And, and says, uh, you know, for the rest of, of your days, you're going to crawl on your belly. And he basically cursed the, uh, the reptilian world to, to a lesser form of glory. Well, back to this story. British researchers granted approval to edit genes in human embryos. Why would you want to edit a, a, a gene in the human embryo? Well, to make it better. It's the ancient promise. In a controversial move, Britain's Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority, uh, a, regula a regulatory body in England, they've approved a research application for a London-based laboratory to carry out gene editing experiments on human embryos. Modify these embryos and you shall be like gods. You just up yourself a notch on the creation chain. You know, move, move up and become a little bit higher being. That's the ancient lie. While the proposed experiments are aimed at researching fertility issues, critics of the issue say that this could open the door to creating designer babies. Well, why would you want to create a designer baby? You would want to create a designer baby so that it would be better than these other babies over here. <clears throat> you want to create superior beings with superior characteristics. Well, isn't this exactly what Satan promised Eve? You know, just uh, eat of this fruit and you should be like gods. I'm of the opinion that the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil uh, had a fruit that in, in some way that we don't understand was capable of modifying human, the, the human genome. And it certainly changed Adam and Eve from what they were before they ate it. And from that time forward, the battle for reconstitution and regeneration, and indeed for redemption of, of humankind, has been a genetic race. Hence the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. He, uh, he was actually uh, a man born of a woman, but his genome was pure because God was the agent uh, in the fertilization uh, of that embryo that became the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he grew up being what we were supposed to be had we not sinned. And of course, since then, he's provided a way for us uh, to be like him through the new birth. But back to this whole idea of uh, editing human genes and creating designer babies. This decision comes in the wake of the news from last April of a Chinese research team that conducted similar research, editing the genes of human uh, embryos to study uh, B it's called beta thalassemia. There's, it's a blood disease, and the Chinese said, you know, if we modified a certain gene, uh, we could uh, get rid of this particular disease, beta thalassemia. And isn't that a wonderful thing to do? <clears throat> To modify the human gene so that no, lo no longer would a human be susceptible to, susceptible to a particular disease. Uh, this method, by the way, uses the CRISPR kit, CRISPR-Case9. How about that? You remember the CRISPR kit that uh, Tom Horn brought to these studios uh, a few weeks back? And... Uh, and he talked about the rapid advances being made in human genetic modification. Well, the CRISPR kit now, <clears throat> which has the ability to clip out and to replace segments of the human genome, uh, is called gene editing. Uh, and by the way, gene editing is the thing that they're discovering, they're the thing that causes a lot of diseases in, in humankind. And they're saying, well, if <clears throat> gene editing is, is accomplished by viruses and bacteria, then we humans can use it to reverse the process and cure diseases. And while we're at it, we can 
uh, create uh, better versions of humankind. The Institute says that the research will be focused on how human embryos develop during the first week of development, period when there's a great genetic activity uh, in the cellular cluster that becomes a child. The individual embryos will be terminated after the previously mentioned seven-day growth period. So we're doing uh, experimentations, uh, experimentation on human embryos and then quote-unquote terminating the embryos. Well, <clears throat> you know how I feel about that. What happened in the garden? <clears throat> in the garden, the Lord God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field, upon thy belly thou shalt go. Dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed, the seed of the serpent, and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, thou shalt bruise his heel. It's all about the seed, and I've said this many times before, but uh, given the advances that we have in human genetics, we live in a very, very scary time. We live in a time when the forbidden fruit is once again being tasted. And remember the promise? You shall be like gods. You'll be improved, an improved version of Adam and Eve. You know, God wasn't telling the truth. It's okay to go ahead and, and taste the fruit. What did the fruit do? In my opinion, it modified the genomes of Adam and Eve. And from that day to this, man has been trying to restore that lost quality that was placed in him when he was first created by God. Fortunately, there is something that is legitimate under the heading of uh, genetic modification. It's called the new birth in Jesus Christ. Uh, he died for your sins. If you claim by faith his ability to uh, regenerate and redeem you, then you're born again. <laughs> by the way, one day you'll be glorified and you will rise to the state that God intended in the first place. That's what I call real genetic modification. I'm Gary Stearman. We're watching, so you keep watching too. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.